Welcome, my gorgeous Scorpios. Um, this is going to be your September 2024 reading. Um, this is going to be for Scorpio Sun, Moon, Rising. Uh, many of you are intuitively guided, and I thank you for paying attention to your intuition. You know, we're getting a lot of new people in that I'm welcome. I hope we're all welcoming into our soul family because I feel like we're just one big soul family. Um, so, and I, and I just want to let you know, um, how, how truly grateful I am for each and every one of you, um, your words of encouragement through the comment section. I mean, you just really build me up and, um, I don't want you to think I take that for granted. So just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, some of you could certainly be in love with the Scorpio, you know, Scorpio is a very lovable sign and I know. Some people are going to, I mean, listen, I was married to a Scorpio who wasn't, well, was loving to other people. But, you know, those who are living in their, living in their higher vibrational energy, they really are truly loving. Um, but if you're here because you're in love with the Scorpio platonically, romantically, you know, understand your spirit guides, know that you're here. You know, you were assigned this big team of angels and archangels and spirit guides to help you on this physical plane so anytime you feel alone just remember that you know hold on their energy that's what they're here for um and i do read through my spirit guides i feel like that's why these readings resonate with so many different people um i feel like you know you're either drawn to them or they just find you in divine timing like, sometimes I feel like I don't even want to put a date on them um, because I know they'll find you divine timing. Um, also, I want to give a shout out to the Scorpios in my life, my daughter, who is October 29th. And I know quite a few of you share her birthday, so I love you already. Um, my brother, who is November 6th, um, both of them such loving souls. I mean, truly loving, loving souls. So. Um, Scorpio is one of my favorite readings to do. I have to say, not that I don't love doing other readings, but you really are one of my favorite readings to do. And it has nothing to do with my family. It's just, I just love your energy. Um, so anyways, this month we're doing things a little differently. Um, instead of like how I normally do my monthly readings is I started the birthday month. And then I go forward. So I did start with Virgo, but then I did the opposite sign to Virgo, which was Pisces. Um, so I'm doing yours and your opposite sign will be Taurus, is Taurus. So I'll be doing Taurus as next. I feel like it's, you know, and I felt intuitively guided to do it this way. But I have to tell you, I'm so glad I did. Um, because remember, your opposite sign um, when you think about it, they can really, you know, sometimes they have what we lack and you have what they lack, but we can learn from that. Um, and I don't know, I say this all the time. I do love Scorpio and Taurus together. Um, but beyond that, so we are doing opposite signs and I brought back the major arcanas for the month of September. This is just a deck that you know, I've been saying this in all the readings. I cannot remember if if they came this way or if I actually just took the Major Arcanas out of a deck. Um, and it was such a long time ago. I've been reading Tarot forever. So anyways, we're going to use them really as the bullet point for the readings. We'll, we'll begin with Mother Mary and then we'll, we'll bring these in and then... For your main spread, we're going to use the Universal Tarot for your clarifying or to go deeper and deeper we go. And listen, I feel like if anybody appreciates that, it's Scorpio. Um, we're going to use the Gilded Tarot to go deeper. And I use, I'm use i using the same decks for the opposite signs um, and then changing up decks for the next set of opposites. So, Gilded Tarot. And let's go ahead and officially open this reading. Though I do feel like I open it as soon as I put, as soon as I put flag. 
So we're going to give Mother Mary a couple of shuffles. Everything is always pre shuffled, but I like to shuffle it with you here. You know, in my mind's eye, you're all sitting around me like we're all here together. And um, that's just the way I see it. It's the way my guides allow me to feel it. All right. Mother Mary for my beautiful Scorpios and those intuitively guided. And I love that I love that many of you are really trusting your intuition. Um, I feel like that's a secret to life. You know, your intuition is going to let you know if something is good or not so good. All right. Hmm. Mother. Mother. This is probably for my daughter. You know, um, I have had people say, like, I feel like when I watch a Scorpio reading, you're reading just for your daughter. That's not true. Though I do keep her in mind. I mean, you know, she is a Scorpio. Um, but it's interesting that mother came out. So I open my heart to my mother's humanness and her divinity. You know, when I get this card, often when I think about, it reminds me of like my own mother. And, um, you know, my mother, hmm, how do I say this? Like, she wasn't the most loving mother. Um you know, didn't know how to say I love you to her children. Uh, my dad was the opposite. And that's why I was a daddy's girl. Um, but now, you know, and I have to say she had four teenagers. And after raising kids and just living through some of her experiences, I now understand her more than I ever have. Um, she eventually did come around. Um, and I feel blessed for that. Like before she left this earth, something, you know, made her start to like use terms of endearment with me. Anyways, mother. And I may take another card for mother Mary at the end of the reading, but I wanted to start with mother Mary. All right, let's go ahead and. The Empress just jumped off, just jumped out. Interesting, right? Because this is the mother figure. Um, I'm not going to take it yet because I'm, I want to shuffle them and cut them. But interesting, the mother figure. There's not a lot to them, so the cutting process is a little difficult. Okay. So I'm shooting for like three cards, but... I'm certainly not going to refuse whatever wants to come out. So let's go ahead and begin with this portion. Again, this is going to be like the bullet points of the reading. This may tell its own little story at the same time. Wow. My card flew. Flew right up by the mother. Hello, lovers. Hello, lovers. The magician, manifester, he's looking right over at the lovers. I'm going to bring this lid down. He is like literally looking at the lovers. Interesting, Scorpio. All right, let's put these away. We have, well, there is your opposite sign. Hierophant. Card of Taurus. By the way, the lovers is a card of Gemini. I'm not really reading these as a sign, though. I'm just reading the energy. But I do want to let you know it is a card of Gemini. The meaning of the card is the head of a heart decision. I do find it interesting that the magician is looking right back at the lovers, though. You know, almost like, you know, the ability to manifest maybe love into your life. Um, you know, it's interesting. I got this for another sign. And what I really noticed was how their hands like are almost touching. Not quite. They are seeing each other. Right. And usually it's an it's the angels influence over these lovers, like in a higher vibrational um, energy. Here is Cupid. 
it's almost like Cupid's getting ready to like activate the heart chakras of these two people. Again, they're looking at each other, but their hands are like so close to touching, but not quite. That may mean that love is in the air. Love is in the air. Then we have the Hierophant. This is about your belief system, your faith, keeping faith alive. Um, I don't really read this as a religious type of energy, more of like spiritual. Of course, you know, I do feel I do feel God in this energy. Um, it is a number five. So anytime you see a five, it does speak about change. But I feel like really it wants you to question like yourself, like, you know, ask yourself, am I living life according to my terms, you know, um, according to my beliefs? Or am I lowering my vibration to be, you know, someone else to match what somebody else wants me to be? Be true to you. I definitely feel like that. Be true to you. And then, hello, temperance. Divine timing. This is interesting because temperance is mirroring the soulmates. I'm sorry, the lovers. But if you just look what she's doing, she has this two cups, right? And really, I feel like temperance is making sure both these cups are equally filled. Or another way of saying that is that they are on the same vibration. The hierophant coming before that tells me that um, this is of a higher vibration. Now, as I say that, I don't want you to like shoot for perfection because you're not going to find it. You know, we're born imperfect. And I feel like that's part of the adventure. You know, life is about the adventure and allowing ourselves to explore and learn and grow. Temperance's first message, though, is patience. And maybe one of these cups, you know, they may be there in the process right now of raising their vibration to meet the other. I don't feel like temperance would bring these cups together until it's the right time. Um, so patience, but also divine timing. This is also the card of Sagittarius, by the way. Slide these over a little bit. So, the lovers. The magician looking right at the lovers. The Hierophant. Interesting, because the Hierophant is looking right over at Temperance. Your beliefs, you know, and it looks like the Hierophant is giving a blessing. Maybe this is you receiving a blessing. But doesn't it look like that? Like, like I'm giving a blessing, maybe the blessing over these soulmates. You know, and I'm not, you know, I don't want to jump right into like, oh, it must be soulmate energy, but. With temperance mirroring the lovers. Hello. That potential to me is very great. All right. Let's bring in the um, universal tarot. Give it a couple shuffles. All right. Let's give them a cut. And, um, you know, I just know that these cards are going to, I feel like th this, this spread will give us definitely more clarity on why each one of these cards showed up. So let's go ahead and begin with this. We have the Knight of Swords. Dun, 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 dun. It's like I'm on my way to save the day. You know, the Knight of Swords to me means some type of communication is coming your way. Um, it looks like it's coming quickly, right? He looks like he's in a rush. So I feel like this communication is coming quickly to you. Let's see. 
who from and what for we have the four of cups next four of cups talks about um can be discontentment boredom in one's life you know this person first of all i love that she's sitting by this tree because i feel like trees carry like wisdom you know old wisdom and i feel like this is one of the things that we can do to really help ground ourselves even help find clarity is get out into nature you know sit by a tree you know hug a tree and this person's really looking at these cups these are the cups that maybe haven't gone so great it doesn't mean that they were a disaster it just means you know she looks she does look down but here's a cup coming in and it feels like it's coming from the hand of god divine temperance right so but this person is like well she looks discontent the meaning of this card though is about learning how to use your spiritual discernment relating to anything that comes your way and it's showing you that a cup is coming your way I may not believe it. I may be unsure of it. That's why, um, you know, divine asks you to use your spiritual discernment. Remember, that's a gift that God has given you. Learning how to use that spiritual discernment, trusting in it. Um, you know, and I do get this energy for some. There could have been something that had been eclipsed out of your life, so to speak, and, you know, has put you in somewhat of a sad state. Um, maybe I'd hope someone would communicate with me. But maybe something was meant to be eclipsed out of your life, so that, this cup that's coming in, um, can be accepted you know it would definitely be especially with this energy up here something of a higher vibration you know something and I feel like will make this person who right now looks very sad to me very down I feel like can change that around you know I feel like divine works in mysterious ways sometimes you know when we're at our lowest levels that's when something amazing can happen. We just have to keep the faith. All right. Wow. Nine of Swords. Scorpio. And the Seven of Wands. Interesting. Let's slide these over. Seven of Wands. You know, that's about standing your ground. Yes. But you have the Nine of Swords next to that. Nine of Swords is, is about a lot of worry. You know, it's like this person um, lies, her head, you know, lies her head down in the evening and, you know, probably has these worries and thoughts. But I love that the Hierophant's right above that. It's almost like your spiritual team is, is trying to show you a way out, a different way, potentially. Um... And again, I feel like with the Seven of Wands mirroring this Knight of Swords, yes, it can be communication is coming in. However, that Knight is facing like the past. And it's almost like, I don't know. I feel like chances are you've been surrounded by some type of energy where, listen, where you, I feel in the Seven of Wands, I feel it is defensive type energy, you know, and defending myself. Um, you know, it's almost like, you know, you broke up with someone and maybe you just feel, maybe you think that nothing else will come into your life. You know, the nine of swords is about unnecessary worry. That is the meaning of the card. And a lot of times in the nine of swords, it's our thought system. You know, what would temperance, divine, 
ask you to do with that worry that again is unnecessary and when i say unnecessary sometimes it just simply means that i'm worrying about things that i just cannot control and if it's another person maybe i just can't control their energy but listen maybe i'm not meant to maybe i've tried and it just didn't work out in my favor you know, and I can see for like a moment or even longer where I could look at this energy and be like, woe is me. Um, but at the same time, I'm thinking in the seven of wands, it's like, here you are putting out all these different fires. Like I put out one fire, another one starts. And that may be exactly why the nine swords is, right? I keep putting out these fires, but then a new one starts. I feel like if this knight of swords is talking about, you know, someone who, let's just say, is leaving your life. I want to remind you that in the four of cups, you are receiving a new cup. Her head is down. She doesn't know that yet. You know, and it's almost like that cup is being, is like divine's trying to put it in your face because, again, my energy right now just feels low. Hmm. But you know what? I have a feeling things are going to change. And even in the moment, it may not feel like it. But that doesn't mean it's so. You know, even in the moment, you what you want to remember, I love the temperance and the magician are here because that is you working hand in hand with divine to really manifest probably a better life. If it's relating to a person, Probably someone who um, will be better fitted for you. You know, I can't control what someone else does, but I can control myself. And I feel like, again, if this, again, is someone being eclipsed out, I don't feel like you're happy anyway. But maybe I need to come to that realization. You know, change is hard. Especially like as it relates to love, like love that's being eclipsed out of our life, even if we know that it's probably the best, you know, it's probably the best thing for us. It's still difficult. I know that energy. You know, I'm not going to go into my own personal story, um, but I do know this energy. You know, I do feel like I have to say, though, um, that. In the Four of Cups energy, I remember being in that energy when I had just broken up with someone that I was with for, you know, 25 years. And um, I had moved out, got myself my own apartment. Felt good about that. You know what I mean? I felt good about feeling independent and all that. But then I had this weak moment of where I felt a little lonely. And I did call this person and I was going to invite them over. And that was the very moment that Sam, who many of you know now, um, is someone that I was with when I was a teenager. But, you know, it's interesting because a friend of mine said to me, do you remember when you met Sam? You said, like, someday I'm going to marry that man. And I didn't remember that. Um, but during that moment is exactly when my call waiting came in and it was Sam and it was 40 years after the, you know, it was 40 years later and it was something completely unexpected. And it, and it, from that moment, it changed everything. I hung up the phone with the other person and I took the call from Sam and now we actually live together. Did I think that back in the four of cups? Not even a little bit. But that may be what temperance is also about. Like, and the hierophant. Like, just trust that you just never know. Um, 
you know, what may enter your life next. Okay. It's funny. I just said I didn't, I wasn't going to tell you about my own story, but it just feels like that. Look at this. Ace of Pentacles. Ace of Pentacles means something is coming into your physical world. This is this is the one ace that really signifies that something is coming into your physical world. It's tangible. You know, it may start as a seed, as I feel like all the aces do. And then it's up to me what I do with this ace. Do I nurture it? Do I water it? Do I give it sun so that it can just grow and grow and blossom? Or do I just let it dry up and die? I feel like if the person in the Four of Swords doesn't recognize that, listen, there is this chance that this other cup is coming in, I may just let this dry up and die. Now, do I feel like your guides will probably send it again? I do. But that's a really good omen. And by the way, it is mirroring the lovers right now. You know, for some of you, it could certainly talk about this Knight of Swords could be someone of your past. Yeah, I feel like it would be something very unexpected. Very unexpected, but probably very welcomed at the same time. You know, some of you may have been waiting and wishing for, like, a new cup to come in, even if it is someone of the past. Um, and temperance may just, you know, because temperance is about patience. And about divine timing. Well, if I'm kind of stuck in, you know, like not believing that a miracle can happen at any time, and that's exactly what miracles are about, you know, you don't expect a miracle. That's what makes it a miracle, at least in my eyes. All right. Well, hello, magician. Mirroring the magician. Following the Ace of Pentacles. You know, the magician is a reminder, like, like when you learn to row, you understand that the fool really is all of us, right? It's, it's anytime you're starting on a new journey, something is ended and something new is going to open up. Um, you know, again, in divine timing, but... I feel like with the magician's energy, you know, if I can work with divine and manifesting the type of life I want, I feel like the success is very high. Also noticing the infinity sign about the magician's head, no beginning, no end. It must speak of the lovers. We have the Seven of Pentacles. Hmm. We have the Hierophant again. Interesting. And then we have your Major Arcana, the Death card. You know how interesting that we have the Hierophant. We're doing opposite signs. And here we have both of your signs. We have Taurus and we have yours, Scorpio. Now, let's talk about the meaning. First of all, before we get here, let's go back. Because we have the Seven of Pentacles. To me, the Seven of Pentacles is like your tree of life. These are about the seeds that you're planting. And nurturing. If you are nurturing them. I feel like this also talks about, you know, seeds that are, that are meant to be. Some of these seeds, I feel like we plant before we come into this lifetime. And it's divine timing when it's time for them to come in. Well, here it is. 
here is one of those seeds. I mean, it is connected to the lovers, right next to the magician, and double the magician. So could it be both these lovers thinking about each other, though probably not in each other's life right now? And it just feels like it's meant to be. You know, this energy of the Nine of Swords and the Seven of Swords, where, again, I feel like I put out one fire, another fire begins. And if it's speaking about a person, you know, where I'm trying to control this energy, I'm trying to, maybe I'm trying to make them more loving, you know, making them understand their ways. But I feel like you probably won't have any success with that, right? That's their journey. Like, they have to realize what they're doing and um again standing your ground well how long do i want to stand my ground how long how much effort do i want to put into something that really is just causing me excess worry you know if it's relating to love well i want someone who is free and open with their love you know, not someone that I have to teach how to love. Am I holding? You know, and I feel like the Seven of Pentacles really speaks about not just the good things that happen in our life, but also the difficult things. And the reason why I say that is I feel like as souls having human experiences, let me put it a different way. You know, we are spiritual beings. And our spiritual being is the intellect to our soul on in this lifetime, on earth. So our soul does want to have different adventures, right? The soul comes to grow and learn. But sometimes we can, can, just, we can get stuck in past energy. And, you know... And that could be a lesson in itself. But I feel like if that's a lesson, then I want to learn that lesson. Do I allow myself to get stuck, right? Am I trying to make someone else to be, you know, who I think they should be, but it's not working? How long do I want to keep doing that? You know, the death card does signify a closing of a door, but it also signifies a rebirth. And the Ace of Pentacles right above it, it's like, okay, well, we know that rebirth will take place. But first, there is a door I got to close. So, again, I feel like the Seven of Pentacles doesn't just speak about, you know, what may feel like a miracle as this starts to open up, but also about the experiences you've been through. You know, sometimes just look back at your life and understand, like, okay, you know, through some of these difficult situations, where was my own vibration? And again, I speak about I speak about this through experiences. Some of the most difficult times in my life is where I lowered my vibration. I thought that's just the way it had to be. It wasn't until I realized that I was giving away my own power. Right? I was trying to change people who just didn't want to be changed. So be it. Right? It's like, so be it. Now I know better. You know, it's interesting. I just wrote this as a comment where I said, um, it, it reminds me of something Oprah said, when you know better, you do better. You know? And that's what we're learning. So it's not about judging yourself. It's about just understanding, I know more now. Therefore, I expect more. And therefore, divine's like, well, then that's exactly what we've been waiting for. Close the door. Listen, this door wasn't serving you anyways, because it has you in discontent energy. It has you in a lot of worry. How nice would that be to be able to eliminate that? And some of you, maybe it is like literally the change that has you worried. Change can be scary. 
Lord knows I've been through a lot of changes in my life. But each change may help you evolve higher and higher. And think about the law of attraction. I know I say that a lot in here, but listen, I'm a big believer in it, right? It's like, it's like the universe must meet us exactly where we're at. So if I'm in this lot of, a lot of worry energy, and if I'm trying to change someone, um, I feel like, well, this person will just keep disappointing me. So what do I need to do? I need to think about me. I need to think how I'm discontent. What can I do? How can I better, you know, make changes in my life? And I feel like that's a little bit what the Hierophant is also saying. You know, have you been lowering your own vibration to try to help someone else raise theirs, but you're not being successful? Well, that's their life journey, or that's one of their life lessons. And, you know, sometimes we cannot change people, but maybe we're just not meant to. So the death card speaks about a rebirth. But I do feel like, you know, it's really important in this energy that doors be closed. And by the way, Scorpio, you know, I feel like it is something that you probably had to do a few times in your life. But I feel like it's because ultimately you're going to figure out that you are this powerful person. You know, that you do have beautiful morals. And those who just can't accept that, well, I feel like they got to go. But that's your choice. Closing of the door. And I, you hear me say this often, another door will always open. Here it is. Literally coming into your physical world. This ace is also being mirrored by the Hierophant. So to me, this feels like someone who is much more, hmm, much more like you, you know, like your, like your morals, your faith. And I'm not even talking religion. Um, you know, you want to live more of a high vibrational life. And I feel like so do they. But listen, that might have been what temperance is working on. Not everyone is ready at the same time. And that's where that patience comes in. Closing that door. Allowing a rebirth. You know, understanding with the magician's energy, your power in all this. You know, when we realize that we should take on that energy of the magician. And work hand in hand with divine we can truly create beautiful lives for ourselves you know not issue free because that's life but things that felt like mountains in the past will really feel like molehills now those challenges of the past that seemed like ah oh, so hard to get through as i evolve now I feel like I can walk right through them. Any fear, I can face it now. Understand it. Understand that it's a lot of it's not necessary. Okay. Keep going. You know, and I do love that you have two magicians. And this magician is looking over at the lovers. And this magician is sitting right next to the Ace of Pentacles. You know, yes, this Knight of Swords. First, I did feel it was like communication coming your way. But then I realized he's really facing the past. And he's mirroring the Seven of Wands. So I feel like, you know, whatever purpose this person or situation had in your life. I feel like it's just, you know, it's time has come. Like the ending, it's time for it to end. I just have to allow it. And I have to believe that there is more. Right? There is more just waiting for me. Oh my gosh. Hello, lovers, again. Right under the magician. 
Look at the synchronicities here. Wow. Here's that angel. Beautiful angel influence over the lovers. To me, it feels like this is now you believing that you do deserve, let's just say, the highest form of love. You know, I feel like there's all different levels to love. And sometimes I don't even want to give them a name. There's just different vibrations of love. I feel like this, if this is speaking of love, this was a lower vibrational love. But maybe this is to teach me something. Sometimes the lesson is simply what it is I don't want in love, right? I want someone who wants to be a partner with me. Wow. I mean, come on. Death card, closing the door. I know a door it wants to close. That rebirth. Not only is the Ace of Pentacles saying it's something that is going to come into your physical world, the magician is the ability to manifest that. You know, but what I was going to tell you earlier is the magician is the fool's first mentor. So you're closing a door. That would make you the fool, right? It means a new beginning. It means taking a leap of faith. You know, you have faith here twice. So taking that leap of faith, closing that door, allowing the next door to open, and look who's just sitting there waiting. You know, it brings me right back again to temperance where I said she's really making sure that both these cups are equally filled, that they're both on the same vibrational energy and patience until they are. And then we have two hierophants again, you know, to me, again, it just feels like someone who has the same beliefs that I have, someone who wouldn't ask me to lower my vibration to be with them. And I don't even know that people would ask us, you know, you would just know that. I feel like as you evolve, you really, especially you, you really can learn to read people's energy. And I may have denied this for a while. Like, I may have denied that I've just been hanging out with lower vibrational energy. And, you know, it's really up to me to make that change because they're not going to change. Again, I put one fire out, another one out, another one starts. It's funny how I said this higher event feels like blessing coming in look at this hierophant look what's below it it's like the keys to your kingdom there's two keys two keys but it does feel like to your kingdom wow seven of pentacles is looking right over at that energy also you know understanding that even, even things that don't go right sometimes are meant to be, but they're, they're learning lessons. Again, reminding us, reminding, you know, reminding yourself that you are a soul having human experiences. That means that you can truly get through anything. Doesn't mean it's easy, but sometimes it is those difficult lessons that teach us the most. It raises our vibration more than ever. You know, if nothing else, it gives you the opportunity to look back and say, look what I have overcome. Look what I have overcome. Look how I have grown. I'm not the same person I was back in that four cups. I am learning how to use my spiritual discernment. It does feel like it's bringing me blessings but also through the lovers. It can signify a head over heart decision. But this person in the four of cups is receiving a cup. It's just, will she accept it? Will he or she accept it? Well, 
magician all around it. And the lovers connected to these magicians. I mean, wow. Synchronicities are fantastic, I just have to say. And I don't want to keep harping on this, but temperance is mirroring the lovers. So, you know, all in divine timing. And it could simply mean, like, again, if, you know, if I if this energy came in, but I was still in the Nine of Swords energy, would I even accept it? If this Ace of Pentacles showed itself, but I'm in this Nine of Swords energy, am I going to nurture it? Probably not. I feel like someone may have had you on a hook for a while. But now I feel like you're evolving. All right. Well, hello, star. Hello, star. You know, it's interesting how I kept saying miracles. This is about your hopes, your dreams, and your wishes. And, you know, I feel like in the star's energy, this is about you working hand in hand with divine to bring them about. You know, this person's naked. And there's a reason why this person's naked. It's because they're learning how to be truly who they are, be themselves. You know, if let's just say love comes in and someone's like, yeah, okay, I think I love you, but you know, I want you to change this about yourself and that about yourself. And, and listen, I kind of feel like that's, that might've been what I've done here where I wanted someone to raise their vibration, but they're just not going to. Here you're being your authentic self. And that tells me that someone's going to love you for exactly who you are and you them, by the way. Pouring those loving waters. Your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. Can they really come true? Why can't they? You know, I lived that life. And again, all of it was completely unexpected. Yet here I am. Also card of Aquarius. By the way, this person is looking right back at the lovers. We have the King of Pentacles. Interesting, coming right under Taurus. Now, I'm not going to say it's just Taurus. Um, can be a Virgo. Um, Capricorn. You know, the King of Pentacles is someone... When he looks at life or a situation, he really looks at the big picture down. You know what else I'm noticing? Look how he's holding this pentacle in his hand. Here is his pentacle. Look how he's coming under the hierophant. To me, that's someone who lives, you know, who has morals, let's just say. They has figured themselves out. And is mirroring temperance. Now, I'm not just saying it has to be an earth sign. But it does feel like someone who's grounded. You know, probably sat by that tree themselves. And then with that, we have the six of cups. Hmm. Okay. Wow. So, that may be why I told you my story. Um, and I know a lot of you know the story and you're probably tired of it. Um, but I feel like it just keeps showing itself in a lot of readings. And I feel like to me, it really felt like a miracle. Um, even though I didn't move directly into it, though, once we connected, we, we like talked on the phone really for years. Um, but we were really growing. Like now I can look back at it and I, and I thank God that I did spend that, time, you know, those years, like having those romantic talks on the phone. Like once he called, we talked every single night for hours. I mean, until we went to bed at night, sometimes we just left the phone on. Do you know what I mean? Like that's, that's how romantic it was, but it was over the phone. So this is, this can signify someone that you already know, but listen, this would be someone, you know, that you have happy memories about. 
I love how this little boy is handing these flowers over to this little girl. Now, at this age, you know, it doesn't really signify romantic love, but it's almost like it's like this connection. There's this cup. I just noticed that sitting right there on the staircase. Hmm. It's like the staircase is like the evolution of what was. This can even talk about somewhat of a past life. But then you're manifesting them into this life. I feel there's probably some synchronicities also. You know what I mean? Like when we do have these discussions, because I felt that where this king, which can also be a queen, by the way, um, is sitting by this tree and really is absorbing wisdom, even though they may not know that. And I, I did picture that this king probably was sitting maybe by that same tree. You know, it's like each is having their own, how do I want to say this, evolution, um, having their own growth, um, coming back to themselves, reclaiming their own power, you know, letting go of those who just keep, you know, maybe putting us down, putting us down. I had to keep putting out the fire, the fires, you know, and the seven, seven of Wands does talk about standing your ground, but at the same time, I feel like we got to know when enough is enough. And that to me is what the death card talks about. You know, it's this line that the death card is talking about. Everything else is beautiful. Truly beautiful. And the star is mirroring the Hierophant. Where I felt there was a blessing, be, the, a blessing was taking place. And the Hierophant's looking right over at Temperance, almost like, is it, is it time yet? Is it time for me to create this blessing? Because Temperance, again, patience, right? I want to make sure both are ready. Both have, you, you know, both have probably gone through this experience, but both have probably evolved. And I say that chances are you have evolved or you are. And maybe some of you, this is your sign. You know, don't forget, like your guys are always sending you signs. And, and, and these signs are really meant to help you um, really live a good life. But sometimes we don't pay attention to those signs. Like in this row, I feel like chances are there was some red flags. But as human beings, a lot of times we ignore those red flags. Like, no, I can, I can help this person evolve. And listen, sometimes you can help someone evolve. But not this person. Interesting. All right, let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Hello, Ace of Swords. Ring, ring. Ring, ring, ring. Remember me? You know, the Ace of Swords to me is number one, a yes card. It is about communication. But it's truthful communication. It is about integrity. I feel like for some of you, it's like, it's your integrity. It's your truth. It's your honesty. Queen of Wands underneath that. This this queen is someone who moves according to her passions, her desires. It's interesting because I feel like her little black cat is, she sends the cat out to like, like determine the energy that's coming towards her. And the cat lets her know, like, hmm, something good's coming, coming or... Beware. Okay. 
Let's bring in the Gilded Chirrell. Some of you, I feel like, you know, you may be able to look back and say, I've lived a lot of my own mother's experiences. You know, it's like, it reminds me of like me trying to talk to my daughter and, you know, through my own experiences. But she says to me all the time, mom, I got to learn it on my own. And she's so right. She is right. All right. Let's go ahead and give them a shuffle. Look what's on the bottom. Ace of Cups. Ace of Swords. Ace of Cups. It's still hidden. We'll see if it makes its way out. I don't even feel like it has to make its way out to like really explain what this reading is. You know, and it's interesting because I feel like September's readings are talking like your reading last month, I feel like was talking about you evolving like within your career and your money. And this month, it I feel like most of the readings are speaking of love, but not just love. It's just really how to live a better life, how to live a life where I feel satisfied. All right, start at the beginning. But of course, we're going to read it as a whole. You know, and I feel like, don't look back and be like, I mean, I've done it myself. Like, what the hell was I thinking? Um, that may just be it. Like, you maybe you just didn't know better then. But then when you do know better, you do better. You know, another way of saying that is sometimes we do lower our own vibration to try to meet in others because maybe that's the way we feel like that's the only way that they'll accept us. But yet in the same breath, you know, how long do you want to live in that type of energy? All right. Queen of Swords. Right over the lovers. Um, can be a Gemini. I mean, it is coming over Gemini. Um, Aquarius. We do have Aquarius or Libra. Um, but really, I feel like it's you. And, you know, I feel like this is someone who... There's one of my decks where you see the queen is, like, giving her final words. And then she's doing, like, a mic drop. You know, like... Like, I'm my final communication, and boom, the mic drop. This is about, I feel like, this is about your truth. You know, how you communicate. What you accept, and what you do not accept. We have the Eight of Swords. Well... You know, the Eight of Swords talks about a self-created prison. This is truly where we were. What we're really trying to do is protect ourselves in this energy. We're not trusting our intuition because what we're doing is creating walls. Right? We have a blindfold on. It could just certainly mean there's something I just didn't want to face, and maybe I didn't want to face that someone just is never going to evolve. Someone is always going to just be a problem, right? I'm going to have to continue to put these fires out. And listen, maybe it does end. And you say to yourself, oh, that's it. I don't want love again. Of course you do. I know some of you are going to be like, no, I don't. And that is your choice, right? I'm never going to try to talk you out of what, well, I shouldn't say that because I feel like if there is real opportunity, of course, I'm going to try to talk you out of, you know, not believing in yourself. This is someone who has stopped believing in their own intuition. 
Because when you trust your intuition, you don't need to create these barriers. You know, think of the Empress, which we saw. The Empress is someone who she doesn't create it. And it's not that she's never created this, but she's learned to uncreate it. And you are the only person who can uncreate this. She's she's learned how to keep her heart open. She is very nurturing, creative, but she's powerful. She's strong. And I kind of feel like that's what the ace or the queen of swords is saying. Like, I know who I am now. So self-created prison. But listen, when you do put these walls down, when you do take that blindfold off, when you say, I'm not like, I am going to trust my intuition. I've learned enough to know that now. To me, it's freedom. It's like freedom, no matter what happens next, even if you don't want love, it's still freedom. And by the way, I don't feel like you expect this love to happen. So, you know, I still say uncreate, you know, this prison. And then, I don't know, maybe just be open. Coming over that four of cups. Tells me you're not happy in that energy anyway. Also touching the magician. Wow. Knight of Cups. It's exactly what I felt. I felt like for a lot of you, this is unexpected energy. This is an unexpected cup of fulfillment. You know. Unexpected, but what can I do to, I don't know, what do I want to say? Like better plan for it, better just, you know, I feel like it's about really letting go of control and instead trusting in divine, divine timing, knowing that like once you've uncreated that prison, and saying to the universe, I'm going to live in the present moment. And what will be, will be. The world. The next chapter. Makes sense with the death card here. You know, it's touching temperance and that seven of wands. But it is telling you that this knight of cups... This unexpected cup of fulfillment. It opens up a new chapter in your life. And by the way, I feel like everyone in this chapter is of a much more spiritual nature. It's taken time. And that's all of us, right? Sometimes it is those difficult, um, difficult, what do I want to say? Like the difficult things that we've been through, the difficult people. And reclaiming ourselves, our own power, you know, raising, thinking about ourselves, like how can I raise my own vibration? Again, thinking about the law of attraction. You know, in the nine of swords, if I'm in this constant state of worry, but again, these are about things that I cannot control anyways. Do I not just bring back more things to worry about? The answer is yes. That is the law of attraction. However, when I do put these walls down, and really, it's not even about like expectations of what's coming next. You know, for some of you, yes. You know, some of you purposely, you're, you are raising your own vibration because you're understanding that, you know, it is my vibration that's going to determine what comes in next. The world. I feel like this is really the most spiritual time in your life. And I feel like it also speaks about, you know, once you reach, like, let's say, that status of where you are trusting, not just in yourself, but also in divine, in your spirit guides. 
but being proactive yourself in it. I feel like this never, this energy never leaves. You know, temperance is like patience, my child. It is about divine timing. But it also, it, it reminds me a little bit of the Knight of Pentacles, like I come at the right time, not before, not after. You know, what is the right time? The right time is when you are better able to see it for what it is. And then, hello, sun. The sun right over that ace of pentacles. It's, it's almost like you're saying, yes, I am going to nurture this ace. I am going to watch it grow and blossom. You know, I could have decided not to. But this is telling me that you are purposely taking this ace, nurturing it. Again, I feel the energy of the empress. And knowing that if I do nurture it, it's only going to blossom. The sun is like a brand new day. It is a brand new day. The sun, to me, is playful. You know, it reminds me of like when I was a kid and just playing outside and how free I felt. Even though I wasn't truly free, right? My parents still determined, you know, a lot. But I felt free. I love that the sun is also following the world. So it's like, you know, you have the warmth of the sun through... Not only this next chapter, but I feel it for the rest of your life. The sun's also clarity. And it is a different way of looking at life and looking at anything new that's coming towards you. You know, the sun is like reassurance that anything that's done in the dark will come to the light. And maybe that's a part of what I didn't want to face in this old energy. Maybe I just didn't want to face that someone was you know, more of darker energy, where I want to live more in light energy. Mm. Also Carter Leo, by the way. Right over that Ace of Pentacles. Come on. We have the lovers three times now. You know, I love this image. Because this shows you the feminine. And how she's feeling the energy of the masculine. The masculine's not in physical form yet. Now, it doesn't mean he's not in the physical world. It just feels like it hasn't come together yet. But it's almost like I can feel it before it comes together. Right over the magician. With the infinity, the, fit, the infinity sign right above the magician's head. As above, so below. No beginning, no end. Do I think this is talking about love of more than one lifetime? I do. And then look at this. So now the Nine of Swords is being replaced with the Nine of Cups. You know, this line is where a lot of the hardship lies. But this line is also where you really are closing those doors. You know, you're opening yourself up to just divine energy, just whatever. I'll let that bike go by real quick. Nine of Cups is about inner harmony. This is your energy, by the way. Nine of Cups is also about a fulfillment of the wish. And it's got the star right below it. It's coming over the Seven of Pentacles. Some of you, this can talk about 
maybe before this this love because I don't know how I can't not I don't know how I can't be love especially with the lovers here what one two three times the magician here twice the hierophant here twice synchronicities are really off the chart this is when I'm really starting to love my life again doesn't mean I have all that I need, or I shouldn't have said it that way. Um, because I feel like you do have all you need in this energy. But it doesn't mean that more is not coming. I feel like it, you know, temperance is also saying that this is this is a really important energy to then allow these lovers to then come together. You know, when each has found their own inner harmony. When each has given me that excess worry, that unnecessary worry, first of all, first of all, I feel like that alone lifts your energy. It's like you're gone from a brick to a feather, right? Like, uh, to now you're just floating in air. Right next to the lovers. Over the Seven of Pentacles. You know, it's like looking at life and saying, I get it now. These difficult lessons, they weren't meant to like hold me down. They were meant to teach me. So that I could truly learn to just love myself again. Know that what I deserve in my life. And in the Nine of Cups, it's not that I'm even like, it is about a fulfillment of a wish, but I'm not even looking for that. Because again, this is me enjoying my life now. You know, I feel like the Queen of Swords is you reclaiming your power. I feel like the sun over that Ace of Pentacles, again, that seed of perfect energy. This lovers where one can feel the other, even though they may have not manifested into each other's life yet. Inner harmony. What a way to live. So much better than a nine of swords. And sometimes just that realization that these difficult lessons, again, they weren't meant to hold me back. They were meant to teach me. And sometimes the harder the lesson, the more growth that you eventually have and find. You know, the world, the next chapter, divine timing. Well, that feels like now is 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 the time, right? That Knight of Cups, unexpected cup of fulfillment. That's why, again, I feel one lover is feeling the energy of another, even if they haven't come in yet. Some of you, this Nine of Cups can be you, like now being single. And because we're mirroring so much energy, I would not be surprised if you find you know, through conversation, because again, we have this Ace of Cups and it may start as conversation where, you know, each may say to the other, like, you know, you can talk about like a period of time that was difficult and the other one's going to be like, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly how you feel. I've been there. I myself had to let go. Um, you know, I don't want to try to talk you into an earth sign, but I do feel like Scorpio and earth really, um, I feel like you help even each other out. Look at this, the high priestess. Now you're trusting your intuition. Now you're trusting your intuition. 
now you're letting down those walls where you felt like the only way I could protect myself is through these walls, is by building up these walls. And now you're saying to yourself, I don't need these walls. I can feel what's right and what's not right. I mean, it is like the evolution of Scorpio, but also someone else. And the high priestess mirroring the sun, all will be clear. You just need to trust it. Not overthink it. You know, and again, I'm not trying to talk you into anything, but let's say that this starts happening for you. My advice would be just step into it. You know, you don't have to make a full commitment. Just step into it. You know, do I feel like these lovers are meant to be? I absolutely do. But just like the lovers is meant to be, I do feel like even these difficult situations were meant to be. That to me, that's what the Seven of Pentacles speaks about. Not just the good things in my life are meant to be, but also some of these hard things. Because without them, I couldn't realize like who I am today. I couldn't be proud of myself. You know, I feel like just looking back and understanding like some of the situations you've already overcome and how you've grown from them and being proud of who you are today. And I feel like with the high priestess and the sun mirroring each other, it takes away that fear factor for you. All right, let's keep going. What a reading, Scorpio. You know, your readings never disappoint. I have to tell you that. And this is what I love about Tarot. Like, I feel like I'm watching the movie of Scorpio. I'm seeing how Scorpio is evolving. And it's a beautiful thing. Seven of Pentacles over the death card. Ace of Pentacles right above it. Again, divine timing playing its part. You know, these seeds, they're meant to come in now. Now, when I say now, I mean once I've closed that door to what was and I'm allowing a rebirth to take place. Again, doesn't even mean that I'm saying that I have to have love in my life. But I'm finding inner harmony within myself. And then you're just naturally manifesting from that energy. So in the Nine of Swords, you're manifesting. Right? And then I keep bringing these swords back. But then once I find this inner harmony, I'm manifesting from that energy. Well, that only brings you good things back. And listen, if anything comes back, and I'm saying back, but anything comes towards you that is not like of an equal vibration, your intuition is going to pick it up right away. That's what the sun is saying. That's what you want to trust. You know, it was all meant to happen. It was what your soul asked for. And I know a lot of people don't like when I say that, but I truly believe that. I don't feel like our soul came down here just to live, you know, an easy peasy life. I feel like the strongest of us really have gone through the most difficult situations and have come out the other side. Truly learning when a door needs to be closed and then allowing a rebirth to take place. Again, here you are giving sun to that ace of pentacles, to that seven of pentacles. Just what it needs.
You know, another way of saying that is, you know, let's say this unexpected cup of love, because it definitely feels like love comes in, you know, how can I better guarantee myself? First of all, I feel like trust your intuition, because if anything of a lower vibration at this point comes in, at this point in the reading, you'll know it immediately. Just sweep that right out the door. But I don't feel like that's what's happening. I feel like this is talking about this new love, even if it's someone I already know. But it wouldn't be this person. I want you to understand that this is the energy I feel like it's got to go. We have, well, hello, Knight of Wands, right over the lovers, passion, desire. Interesting because it's coming under the lovers and over the lovers. And one of these lovers is where I felt that energy before it actually entered. And in the Knight of Wands, I feel like, and here it comes. And here it comes. And then, well, hello, beautiful Knight of Pentacles. Right over the star. You know, the Knight of Pentacles to me is like your guardian angel. The Knight of Pentacles, along with Temperance, both speak about patience. But they both speak about beautiful things entering your life but at the right time. This night is saying, I'm bringing you a pentacle into your life in the right time. And, you know, you don't even need to worry about like, oh, oh I, you know, will I be at the right place at the right time? Because you're trusting more in divine energy, because you know this cup, this Knight of Cups is unexpected. You know, we did see that Ace of Cups. It's almost like you're just allowing things to happen naturally. And to me, that feels like the right time for this Knight to come in. And by the way, here is the Ace that this Knight promises. And it's right over the star. Your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. They're being answered. But they're being answered because you deserve it. Because you have reclaimed your own power. Just simply divine. I don't even know what else to say. It just feels simply divine. Two knights, by the way. Knight of Wands. Here I come. Full of passion, full of desire. It can move, it can also mean fast moving energy. First, that door closes. Again, we know what that means. And then the rebirth. Two knights ushering that in. You have three knights, actually, each ushering in something different. Knight of Cups, love. Knight of Wands, passion. The Knight of Pentacles, something that's coming into your physical world. So it's no longer like something I'm just feeling. It's actually arriving. And to me, it feels like just when it was meant to. By the way, the Knight of Pentacles that does speak about the right time, right? I do not come before my time. It's also touching that Nine of Cups. So that inner harmony feels like a big part of it. Doesn't mean everything's perfect. You know, doesn't mean there aren't still issues. But I don't feel like it's issues that have to do with whoever this person was. Look at that, the Six of Cups, there is Six of Cups. Wow. Two magicians, both of them are manifesting. You know, it's almost like 
it reminds me of energy like, you know, when I put my head on the pillow at night, even though everything may feel like it's going wrong in my life right now, there may be someone special that I think about. But this is saying that they also think about you. Now, I don't want you just to think that it has to be someone you already know. Though for some of you, I do know it is someone you already know. But this, again, talks about someone that would bring joy to my heart. Someone that I'd have treasured memories about. Reminiscing. That's may, that may be part of what the conversation is going to be about. Synchronicities everywhere. All right. So anything else I want to look at? I mean, your reading is so clear. It just is so clear. Let's just put it this way. I feel like that Eight of Swords and the Death card seem to be two of the most important energies here right now. Or that's what Divine is waiting on. Right? The walls to come down. Not assume that everyone who, you know, if I've been in a bad, let's say, relationship or the lack of one, that not everyone will be like that. The people do evolve. I do not feel like the person in this line does. But again, I feel like that's their lesson. You're not meant to take it on. You're not meant to change them. Because why? Because I don't feel like you can. You know, it, it re just reminds me of some people are more than happy to live in their lower vibrational energy. And that may just be fine for them. Maybe that's what their soul wanted. You know, and I feel like Scorpio, sometimes you do... You know, you do want to see people like at their best. You do want to help people to evolve. That's just your natural spirit. But then I feel like part of your life lesson is to learn that, listen, I can't fix them all. I can't fix them all. But that doesn't mean that I should live less of a life because of them. Not with all this beautiful energy showing up. I mean, the synchronicities truly are off the chart. Truly. And temperance mirroring the lovers. You know, it's how we open this reading. The magician looking right at the lovers. Actively manifesting this, even if it's subconsciously. The hierophant looking over at temperance. To me... I felt like the Hierophant's like, I want to bring this blessing in. Is it time? Is it time? Temperance is like, not yet. There's still some walls that need to be uncreated. There's still a door that needs to be closed. But once they do, then it's divine timing. You know, if you're not if you don't want love, you can simply say no. It doesn't mean that, you know, listen, some are just going to be happy living a life that feels free. And that may be good enough. And if that's the case, that's the case. But I can't deny how love, really true love, feels to be like the real message here. How do I get there? What do I need to think about? You know, what areas do I need to work on within myself? Who have I given my power away to? And I reclaim it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, we already looked there. Page of Pentacles underneath that. Well, you know, Page of Pentacles to me really is about like what you're learning through life.
All right. I think what I want to do, because I don't want to overread it, is I just want to look at the Eight of Swords as it relates to... I don't know. Let's just see what comes out with it. We have the Six of Pentacles. Okay. To me, this feels like this is one of the lessons you were learning. This is this is learning of the fine art of give and take. This is your natural energy of compassion and empathy for the underdog. You know, that's naturally who you are, Scorpio. But I feel like what this is saying is, you know, you can be one of those people who want to give and give, right? But are you open to receiving? And if you're not receiving, how long do you want to give? I feel like that's what the Eight of Swords is talking about. I gave and I gave and I gave. But nothing seemed to change with that. That was probably the lesson. All right. Let's, um, I think I just want to look at the Knight of Cups. And just see, because it's moving directly into the world, which is the next chapter. So let's just see if there's anything else that we need to know about that. We have four of pentacles. And then look at this. Temperance. It feels like it's saying, this is the time now. You know, the four of pentacles, I read it two different ways. First of all, I feel like for some of you, it could be communication is coming directly to your home. You know what I mean? Like your phone rings and lo and behold, it's someone, you know, someone that you haven't talked to in a long time and a conversation strikes up and the next thing you know you're you're reminiscing you're talking about these experiences and really what you're doing is falling back in love i'm saying back in love you don't have to have been like romantically in love but listen temperance is saying this is the time and in the Four of Pentacles, the one thing I want to be leery about is sometimes I can hold on to like the way, you know, like being resistance to really other people's ideas, um, maybe being resistant to divine timing. Maybe I didn't believe in that. I love how temperance is coming between the Knight of Cups and the world, though. And she's right above them, too. So to me, that just feels like it's saying, oh, it's now time. The time has come. Hmm. Um, let's just do one more. I want to look at the Six of Cups. Because there's two of them. And by the way, again, I just want you to notice how this king is holding that pentacle in his hand. And the Knight of Pentacles is literally what it's bringing in. And the Knight of Pentacles, or the pentacle, is right here. The Ace of Pentacles. Okay, well, we got a bit with that. We have the King of Cups. It's like your counterpart. You know, the King of Cups, though, to me, is um, very much like you. This is someone who can really appreciate love. Now, if he was in the reverse, like my ex-husband was, then that means, you know, potentially I'm giving my love to others. But he's not in reverse. He's in the upright. I feel like it's saying, and look what he's holding, this cup. Like he's making, making sure that we see that cup. It's one of the cups that Temperance is holding. Six of Wands. Victorious energy. 
You know what I love about the Six of Wands? Is this is the energy where, you know, where you can be looking back at your life and you are seeing how you evolved. And a lot of times, um, I feel like we help others in this energy just naturally. This is the energy where other people are really admiring you for the actions that you've taken. Well, I feel like you're admiring each other. Now we know. Here's that Ace of Swords. Communication. Justice. This is about balance. You know, it's interesting because I feel like what it's this is relating to the cutting of ties back here. And when I cut those ties, it feels like the scale just naturally balances. Justice is really about making you whole again. That's, that's what justice's job is, making you whole again. And the Ten of Wands. So, you know, in the Ten of Wands energy, it really is where you're putting the majority of the effort on your back. And we can only do that for so long, right? It's backbreaking. I feel like the person in the Ten of Wands secretly is, or subconsciously, wishing for a tower. Like, show me how to end this. Give me the courage to end what is no longer serving me. You know, again, it ties back to that Six of Pentacles where you may be, you know, you may have been given and giving and giving, but not receiving, right? And I can only do that for so long. So, that's what justice is asking you to cut ties to. First, the realization. You know, this 10 wants to end. And justice is the way to do it. Cutting ties. Becoming balanced. Ace of Swords. Communication. But truthful communication. Six of Wands, being proud of who you are and the things that you have accomplished. You know, it makes me feel like whoever this other person is, that's how they're going to feel about you. Like, wow. I can't believe, like, how you've overcome this energy. But I feel like they themselves have also. Maybe you more so than them. But still, and it's all coming through divine timing. Okay, I think what I want to do is I just want to take one more Mother Mary card. Um, it's interesting how I've done this in a few readings now where I feel like Mother Mary wants me to start off with the card, but then also finish I'm saying a card, but really a message. Let's go ahead and give him a cut right through this reading. Well, this makes complete sense. Present moment. You know... This is where your spiritual team would say, we send you the signs in your present moment energy, not in the past, not in the future. It's really important to learn to live in the present moment. Here, in this second line, we're really, st uh, you know, we're still in the past, so to speak. Um, but present moment. I am fully present in the here and now. You know, the signs will be so clear to you in this energy. And then integrity. I feel like someone in your past or could still be in your present, but again, I don't feel like it'd be energy that want, that is staying. Of course, that is up to you. But integrity. I trust my ability to know what is true for me. 
It's exactly what the high priestess is saying. I trust my ability to know what is true for me. It's exactly what the sun is also saying to your intuition. It will be clear. What a reading, Scorpio. What a reading. Interesting because, um, you know, I start thinking about like, what am I going to title a reading like this where you can understand just from the title alone or the thumbnail, like all that this reading is offering. You know, it literally feels like it's taking you from the dark night of the soul into what feels like your heaven. But you're not alone. At least you have the opportunity of not being alone. I feel like it is your it is ultimately going to be your decision. You have free will. You know, listen, I feel like as long as you reach the nine of cups, that inner harmony, I'm happy. But I really hope that all of this comes to you. And I really hope that you allow it. But even if you don't, but you reach that inner harmony, then I'm happy for you. I feel like, you know, once you reach that energy, all this expected other energy, it's just, it's going to reach you. It's going to reach you. And even if maybe at first I'm like, eh, I don't know. I almost feel like it's going to be so hard to deny. But that will be your free will. Some of you, I feel like, and that's probably why, again, I spoke of my experiences, especially about where Sam and I spent years on the phone. Um, but they were, they, you know, it's, it was so romantic and it may sound silly. Like how can be, how can phone conversations be romantic? It was, and we even broke up on the phone and then one of us will call the other back and be like, Oh no, I, I can't let you go. You know what I mean? Like we worked all those issues out before I physically moved into his house. And the only time I talk about my experiences is when I feel something similar for you. Completely unexpected. But yet now my life is completely changed. And so it is. And so it is. All right. I'm going to let that be. I just want to look at the bottom of this deck. Look at that chariot. Something just made me want to turn this over. So the chariot really speaks about unlimited potential. You know, the one thing we want to remember with the chariot, because I feel like the chariot comes in when we're ready for it. Otherwise, it's like getting a car with four flat tires. What good is it going to do me? The chariot is driven by your intentions. Not by the reins of the horse. Can this truly, can I really find this type of love? And can it really last a lifetime? Wow. Your intentions are everything, my dear. Everything. Unlimited potential. The lovers over and over and over and over again. Divine energy over and over and over again. You know, the promise of that closing of certain doors and then a new door open. It's showing, it's like giving you the evidence. You know, this next chapter, it just feels like such a great chapter. But listen, it may have taken time and it may, you know, yes, you may have gone through what felt like hell. But what I really want you to say to yourself is look how I have grown. Even if I'm still stuck in that energy, now maybe you can see that you don't have to be stuck in that energy. You know, when we learn that there's certain people we just can't change, 
And why keep trying, especially when all this wants to come your way? That Hierophant, it felt like I want to bring a blessing to Scorpio. Looking at temperance, divine timing is a time, is a time. Soon, my dear, soon. All right, guys, I thank you so much. You know I love you so much. Um, again, I want to welcome anyone who's new to our soul family. You know, I, I really do picture you're just all sitting around and we're just talking, right? We're just talking. We're learning. Um, divine is like speaking to us and helping us to really, you know, probably live a life that we don't even know is possible, but it is. Okay. Love you. I'll see you next time um, at our table. Bye-bye.